this is you as, as a kid walking around the garden in a Knicks jersey. <laughs> and now, and now, and now you're playing for the Knicks and kids come to the garden wearing your jersey. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's just like, it's really cool. What was it? What does it feel like? What does it feel like? I just try my best not to focus on it, but it's impossible. You see all these kids wearing your jersey. It, it means the world. So um, I try to do my best to be a, be a role model. When you first got signed on the Knicks uh, <laughs> in 2022, you got some pretty harsh reviews here. Uh, this says uh, Knicks pursuit of Brunson ends with overpriced contract. Uh, potential bust is Jalen Brunson. Don't be surprised if this ultimately backfires. Grade C. That's, yeah. Fast forward to now. These are real articles about you this week. Jalen Brunson is the best point guard in the NBA. The jaw dropping rise of Jalen Brunson. NBA superstar no one saw coming. Time to put Jalen Brunson firmly in the MVP conversation. MVP! I mean, you're, you're, you're an all star. Right now, you're an MVP candidate, and the, the Knicks are having the best season of the century. Uh, do, you, do you like proving everyone wrong? Uh, <laughs> I guess so. I feel like um, that's what people on the outside think. Like, oh, he's proving everyone wrong. And yeah, but for me, like, I like to say like, I'm proving myself that I belong. Do you have any game day rituals that, uh, that you do? Like... Mm, yeah, I do. I listen to Bieber before I run out. <laughs> you, listen to, you listen to Bieber? Justin Bieber? I listen to Justin Bieber right before I went out. Every, every game? <laughs> every game. Well, let's welcome in another believer. He listens to Justin before the start of every show on Knicks Fan TV. I'm talking about CP, the franchise. CP, thanks for joining us tonight. Joe, good to be back on with you. Absolutely. All right, so let's talk about Brunson. He was on Fallon, as we just saw in the clip, and Fallon brought up those three letters, MVP. We know Brunson is an all-star, so should he be in that conversation? He certainly deserves to be in that conversation. When you look at the fact that Jalen Brunson is now seeing career highs in both points and assists, he's finally getting the recognition that he deserves as an all-star. I mean, th this Knicks team isn't even worth speaking on without uh, Jalen Brunson on, on this team. He's been that great. Top five in the NBA in scoring. And yes, there are certain players that will get that uh, MVP consideration ahead of him, like Nikola Jokic, or Luka Doncic, or even Shea Gilgis Alexander. But I believe Jalen Brunson is is in my top five, top six in the MVP ladder. He's been that great for the New York Knicks, and it's great to see him getting out there and building his personal brand, Joe. That's one of the things that we talked about uh, in terms of his all-star selection. He needs to get out there and show more of his personal side, and that segment there on Fallon was just a great example. Great job by Jalen Brunson. Yeah, his podcast with uh, Josh Hart, not too bad either. Definitely worth a listen if you haven't tuned in yet. All right, Knicks making moves right at the trade deadline. They acquire, acquire Bo Boyan Bogdanovich and Alec Burks from the Pistons. Uh, it looks Looks like it might take a minute to build some chemistry there. How do you grade the trade? I'll give it a B right now, Joe. They addressed uh, much-needed uh, shooting and playmaking off of their bench. They have guys that can now start as well, so those guys are, are versatile veterans. In Boyan Bogdanovich, they picked up a 20 points per game score, 45% from three. Alec Burke, someone who's familiar with this team, having been here uh, just two years ago, someone that Tom Thibodeau trusts. So it's going to take a little bit of time for them to get acclimated with this team, but for the price that the Knicks paid, uh, the young pieces, the expiring contracts, and second-round picks, Picks. It was a worthwhile gamble for this team that's going to look to make some noise in the postseason. All right. Most people feel that the Knicks are in a good spot for the long term, but let's talk about the short term for a second here. Brunson has been banged up. Hartenstein has that Achilles problem that seems to be nagging at this point. OG has the procedure on his elbow. And then Jericho Sims has been out because of the illness. And obviously we know about Randall and Robinson here. How do the Knicks keep the boat afloat in the short term? The walking wounded, Joe, and this all-star <laughs> break cannot come soon enough. As you mentioned, all these guys that are banged up for the Knicks, and so they have to hope that that extended time off allows some of these guys to heal. They will have more information on OG Ananobi in the next three weeks as he recovers from the elbow surgery. How will Julius Randle respond to having rested over the past three weeks from the dislocated shoulder? He will also be reevaluated. So uh, between now and then, Jalen Brunson and Dante DiVincenzo, the new acquisitions, and Boyan 
Bogdanovich and Alec Burks are going to have to help carry the offensive load while these guys are missing, but they're going to have to find some, some stops in their defense because in their loss on Saturday night to the Indiana Pacers, their defense was, was just woeful. Also, with the absence of Isaiah Hartenstein, the Knicks may need to look out and, and go get uh, some more depth at the center position. I mean, Todd Gibson in their loss to the Indiana Pacers just looked like uh, his best days are, are way ahead of him, and the Knicks are going to have to go and, and find some much-needed rim protection to shore up that defense until the reinforcements come back. Yeah, definitely need help on the offensive glass as well there. Uh, all right, if they do fall in the standings, how much do you think that will matter come playoff time? Is it important for the Knicks to have a top three seed? I think it's important to have at least a top four. You want to get home field advantage, bring the opponent into a raucous Madison Square Garden arena where they will help carry this Knicks team. Top four is certainly ideal. You have other teams that are still trying to jockey for position here. Cleveland is, is probably the hottest team in the NBA right now. Boston is still on top. The Milwaukee Bucks are still trying to find themselves. Philadelphia 76ers without Joel Embiid. Where, how would they fare? So for the Knicks, it's going to be important. As Jalen Brunson said in his postgame press conference in the loss against the Patriots, the Knicks cannot look towards the future. They have to start winning games now and making sure that they can maintain their position in the Eastern Conference. Good news is even if they do have to go on the road against, say, Cleveland in the second round, they beat the Cavs last year when they had, did not have the home court advantage. CP, the franchise, appreciate you stopping by as always. Thanks, bud. Anytime, Joe. See you next time.